My name is Edward Davis. I'm a vertebrate paleontologist who studies extinct pronghorn antelope. In my spare time, I like to make stuff and do YouTube videos about it, which is why I call this Dr. Pronghorn's Make Along Vlog. And today I'm going to be showing you how I made this duffel bag that I used for my trip to Italy. I uh, started with the design, some rough estimate of uh, dimensions, and then started cutting. I uh, ordered this canvas from a website I'll put in the comment in the description. Uh, the intention was to make an 80 liter duffel bag that was about the size that would fit within the airline's limitations for checked baggage. So I, I could have bought a bag or I had some bags I could have used, but that's not how we do things at Dr. Pronghorn's make a long vlog. So I could have make it myself. Uh, this is uh, this is a uh, wax canvas. So it's got some waterproof ability to it. And it also does do some things a little bit like leather, but it's a lot thinner easier to cut. Uh, I didn't really need to use the Sailrite sewing machine on it. I could have probably sewn it on a regular sewing machine, but this is my machine. I'm used to it. Yeah, so to make the curves for it, I found something with the right radius, and it turned out to be the lid to my garage uh, wastebasket. The bottom curves are just this snow steel can, and then, you know, cut out the curves. You can see I actually made the sides the same by taking one big piece and folding it over so I could cut it uh, twice. And that way the two sides are going to be exactly identical. I need some leather for the straps for the handles and uh, some components of the shoulder strap. So using my strap cutter here to cut out a piece of this red leather. I thought the red would complement the sort of brown of the canvas. And then for the zipper, I actually had this chap zipper that I had bought for a different project from Tandy and it turned out to be exactly the right size. So I just uh, used it. I had to cut out several pieces of uh, rectangular pieces to be the gusset. So these are pieces that are going to end up being around the zipper, but then there's also a wider gusset piece I cut for the bottom. So I put contact cement on these straps that I've got for the handles and then uh, folded them in half and uh, pounded them down. You can see me using my little crepe eraser to remove the little bits of uh, contact cement that got onto the finished surface of leather. Then I had to squish it down flat. And here I am stitching the handle. The contact cement is good for holding it in place, but it wouldn't last for the really long term. So I'm going to run a line of stitching down it to hold it all in place. I'm using this red thread for the whole project because of the red leather. And then uh, I, I did a lot of measuring and calculating to figure out exactly where I wanted these handles to be, but I'm not going to show you that because it's kind of boring. So all I, I'm doing here is using a single piece of basting tape just to hold the handle in place so I can stitch it. And then I'm going to put one of my new Dr. Pronghorn's Make Long Blog patches on. I didn't measure that one. I just eyeballed it. I'm using the Duresta principle that if it looks straight, it is straight. So here we go. I'm going to show you the first of the four handles. So you can really see it getting stitched in place. And of course, I repeated this three more times, but I'm not going to show you the whole thing for the rest of them. Then I had to stitch on the patch. So the big mistake I made here was I didn't uh, I didn't back stitch the beginning when I first started on it. I just thought I would be able to run the stitches on top of themselves when they got all the way around. And as a consequence, it did actually come unstitched once I got to Italy. So I had to go back in and hand stitch it. In some of the later shots, you can see a little bit of black thread hand stitching to hold the machine stitching in at the bottom. But otherwise, it worked out pretty well. Just a matter of carefully following that edge as you go around. See that back stitching there wasn't enough to hold the first part of it in. So here I am stitching the zipper onto the gusset. And uh, since it was uh, originally, a, I think, a chaps zipper, it was intended to be a split zipper. So I just went ahead and, uh, and took the two pieces apart for the process of stitching, which I'll often do even when they're not designed to do this. But it's easier when they're designed to just hook together, as you can see from the end of it. I'm going to bury that end in the bag when it all gets put together. So it won't still come apart anymore, but uh, it did make the process of stitching everything together easier. And then when I cut the gusset pieces, I just cut them extra long, knowing that I could even them up once I got everything done, as you saw. Here I am 
getting some more leather ready to be the tabs to hold these D-rings on. These are the D-rings that the shoulder strap's gonna clip to. And so I put them onto these uh, spots where the bottom gusset and the zipper gusset come together. That's what I'm stitching right now. And for all of the seams on the bag, I actually stitched them twice. I ran a, a line of stitching in at a quarter inch seam allowance, and then I went back over a quarter inch inside from that. So you got a total of a half inch seam allowance and two lines of stitching. That way you can see here I am running the second line of stitching. That way if those baggage handlers get too rough with the bag and they do pinch to pop some of the stitches, there's some extra stitching inside to hold it all together. So now I gotta get the gussets onto the sides of the bag. So I'm gonna just use some of these uh, clips all the way around to get everything lined up. And turns out that when I measured, I made the gusset too long, which is better than making it too short. And rather than trying to fix it, I just uh, folded a loop in it. And then eventually I stitched that loop flat so that it doesn't um, stick out in the bottom of the bag. I mean, it sticks into the inside of the bag, but it's uh, flush on the outside. So I won't notice it. So here I'm going all the way around. Don't bother to show you the whole process. So it's not a lot to see. But when I get back to the beginning, I'm going to uh, backstitch it over top of the initial stitching. And then I'm going to jump over and then go all the way around again for the second line offset by a quarter of an inch. So here you can see finishing it up. So all of the seams, like I said, are double stitched for additional security. So I don't want to yard sale all of my stuff all over the side of the tarmac by the airplane. I don't know if people call it yard sailing in other parts of the world, but where I grew up, if you have a bag break or stuff comes out of your car all over the highway, we call that a yard sale. So there, the bag kind of done, but it didn't feel like it was finished. There was something missing, and I realized that I wasn't confident that that stitching on the handles was going to be enough to hold it together. I wanted to add some rivets, and so I cut some patches that are the same size as those flat parts on the front to become the back sides. So the rivets have uh, two layers of leather with the canvas sandwiched in between. That way I'm confident that they're not just gonna pull through the canvas. So I'm using the same copper rivets I use on almost all my projects. You're about to have a montage of high-speed hammering as I go through and do the eight rivets. So you gotta set the, uh, gotta set the washer cut out the rivet close and then you use the ball peen hammer to peen over the end to make it uh, to make it smooshed on the rivet so it's not going to come apart. I know some people really enjoy the high speed hammering so I'll just be quiet while we do all of it. There you go. And now I'm confident those handles are not going to just pull out. Got to make a strap. So I got a shoulder strap for the bag. And I actually bought all these pieces because I had a plan to make a bag like this a couple of years ago. So they've been sitting around waiting. And I realized that the strap itself was a different width than the clips. So I needed to make an adapter piece to fit from the strap to the clips. And so I'm going to use this cardboard to make a template and then uh, cut it out of leather. So you can see I'm going to have two rivets on it. I need to be the width of the strap at the top and the clip at the bottom and then connect it in a somewhat symmetrical way. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. Then use the X-Acto to cut it out of the cardboard. And it's close enough to symmetrical. So I had some scrap red leather left over, so I just used this to make a template for the middle. I know the strap's gonna be that one and a half inches wide at the top, and then I need to make it flare after it loops through the clip. And I'll trim it 
once I got it done. So here I got it mocked up and I'm going to use the scratch all to poke through where the rivets are going to go. Then I've got the holes marked for the rivets. So I use my hole punch to enlarge them to the rivet size. I have six holes total. Then I'm able to put it all back together without the clippy, clippy in the buckle and then use the X-Acto to trim the edges flat. So now it is the shape it needs to be. And without a lot of ca calculation or complicated scheming. And then I could just cut another one out using that one as a template. And now I've got two of them, one for each end of the strap. Transfer the holes over. Okay, and then each one's gonna have to have two rivets Here it comes, clip it off, and then it turned out not to be too hard to peen it down even though it's in a little bit of a valley there. I was worried about it. And I gotta, I gotta stitch it all together. So the plan is to make this one of those infinitely adjustable straps that loops in on itself. Uh, I made another one like this on a recent uh, leather bag project. So one end of it gets this uh, double loop and I had to figure out how to make the stitching work so I ended up having to go backwards for part of it because I came too close to the buckle. Let's stitch across again. I'm trying to make an X in the box. I wouldn't do this if it were leather because I would be worried I was creating weaknesses in the leather but because this is an actual fabric strap, nylon strap, uh, the needles going between the bits of the, the nylon webbing and so it's actually going to stay strong even if you go across it the, the wide way. Yep, and so this one gets to go directly onto one of those clippy ends. And what you don't see is that I've actually run the strap through another clippy and then back across that first one, first uh, double loop that I stitched in so that it all comes together. You'll see it here on the bag. Yeah, so uh, when I get back to Oregon from my Italy trip, I'll have those uh, patches up for sale on my Etsy site. Um, actually made by a different vendor, but... Uh, you know, I'll have them for sale there. And then you can see how I put together the shoulder strap. Like I said, 80 liters, it holds plenty of stuff, enough for uh, more than 10 days. And there's the other end of the strap. See how it comes together. And right now, if you want to, you can order a sweatshirt or t-shirt like the ones I've got here. So uh, I've got a store, a swag store that has the t-shirts and sweatshirts for sale. So you can get yourself a Dr. Pronghorn's Make Long Vlog sweatshirt. That's the zip up hoodie. And then uh, this is the design we have on the t-shirt, several bright colors. I like bright colors, so that's what I'm gonna sell. So you can deck yourself out if you want to and help support the channel, help me uh, make more projects, keep these videos going. Let me know what you think of this bag. If there's anything you would have done differently, let me know uh, what you think of the color choices I made and uh, what colors you would like to see in a 80 liter duffel bag. Or if you'd be interested in me selling smaller versions of this or even this big one on my Etsy shop. Thanks for your time. And if you made it this long, don't forget to drop out a full screen and give me a like. And be careful, it's a dangerous world out there.